Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ms. Domelin Adolfo, faculty of the FEU Institute of Education, and we would like to welcome all our attendees for today's event. Welcome, everyone. Today's event is part of the FEU Institute of Education's Teacher Education Summit as a commemoration of the National Teachers Month and World Teachers Day on October 5. This webinar will discuss the challenges and stress experienced by teachers in the conduct of alternative teaching modalities during this pandemic. Further, this event would share the principles and practices on how a teacher would manage stress brought by the pandemic and thereby still be able to make sound judgment both as a teacher and a human person. And on behalf of the Dean and the Institute of Education, we are looking forward to the celebration of the National Teachers Month and we hope that everyone will continue to join in the succeeding events the Institute has prepared for all of you. And our guest speaker for today is Mr. Arnel Aviles Diego. Mr. Diego obtained his Bachelor of Science in Psychology, magna cum laude, and Master of Arts in Education, major in Special Education with honor from the Far Eastern University. He also holds a degree in Masters of Arts in Psychology. Currently, he is a candidate of Doctor of Philosophy major in clinical psychology. He began his profession as a government consultant for intellectual property at the Department of Trade and Industry, Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines, and concurrently as an educator at Far Eastern University East Asia College and Jose Rizal University. He was the chair of the psychology department of National University from 2015 to 2019. At the moment, he is the academic director of the National University Bulacan. City Bulacan. Professor Jago is also a lecturer for the Psychometrician Board Examination of five review centers which conduct sessions nationwide. He is also a licensed psychometrician and affiliate of Philippine Mental Health Association and Psychological Association of the Philippines. But before we give the floor to our guest speaker, we would like to remind the audience that this event is being recorded. Also, there will be an open forum after the talk so you can type in your questions or comments, but don't forget to write your name and affiliation as well. And at this point, we would like to give the floor to Mr. Arnel Aviles Diego to talk to us about stress management for teachers. Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Clear naman, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. So good afternoon, my fellow Tamaraos. Good afternoon, my fellow educators. Again, I'm Arnel Aviles Jago, and I'm here to talk about stress management for teachers during COVID-19 pandemic. Okay. So we all know naman na ang teaching is a very demanding job because as teachers, we deal with high level of stress daily. Now, as a result of this COVID-19, this COVID-19 or coronavirus, teachers have suddenly needed to move to a completely new way of working. So meaning we have to adjust. We need to adjust mentally, physically, and emotionally. So the big question now is during the stressful times, how do we adjust? Okay. How do we care for ourselves? How do we cope? Okay. So because our students depend a lot on us. So it is important for us to know how to do self-care, okay? So how to protect ourselves from this feeling of stress, how to have a healthy mind, or how to do mental hygiene, okay? So here. So to give you a short background, so as a result 
of this protective measure that have been put in place around the globe due to COVID-19 or coronavirus, teachers have suddenly needed to move to a completely new way of thinking and had to adjust mentally, physically, and emotionally. So the shift to online modalities of learning has seen an increase okay, in documentation, syempre, restructuring in the way our content is being curated. Siyempre, nagkaroon din ng changes in terms of our delivery. Then, of course, changes in our job roles and expectation as teachers. Kasi, di ba, as teachers, kumbaga, we are trained to teach our students ng face-to-face, -face, eh. Kumbaga, trained tayo na, kumbaga, turuan yung sudyante natin ng harapan, okay? So, because of this COVID-19, kumbaga, from face-to-face, -face, naging laptop na yung kausap natin. So, kumbaga, we need to learn new technologies na hindi tayo handa. Okay? So, regardless, kumbaga, regardless kung bagong teacher ka lang or matagal ka na naguturo o kumbaga matagal ka na sa larangan ng pagguturo, serbisyo ng pagguturo, e eh, kailangan mo talagang matuto. So, from face to face, nagkaroon tayo ng mga online classroom, nagkaroon tayo ng synchronous session, nagkaroon tayo ng synchronous and asynchronous session using different LMS. Okay? So, the global scenario now is actually there's no playbook there's no playbook on educating our students during this pandemic time. Meaning, there's no sure, there's no sure and absolute way that it's going to work. It's like an uncharted territory. Likewise, this physical distancing may present many challenges in terms of reaching our students. So we all know that social distancing is eh, sobrang kailangan naman talaga to. Uh, to prevent the transmission of this coronavirus. Eh. However, this social distancing may lead us to social isolation. So this social isolation can lead naman to feeling of anxiety and loneliness. Okay? Ngayon, medyo ito yung mga terms na sobrang demanding ba? Sobrang lagi natin naririnig yung term na anxiety, term na stress, yung term na depression. But according to APA, the American Psychological Association, they define anxiety as an emotion characterized by feeling of tension, nagkakaroon tayo ng worried thoughts, nagkakaroon tayo ng physical changes. Like for example, nagkakaroon tayo ng increase in heartbeat or increase in our blood pressure. So while anxiety can cause distress, take note, it is not always a medical condition. Meaning, hindi porket I experience anxiety na meron na ako agad psychological disorder. Hindi porket I experience uh, anxiety na eh, meron na akong mental problem. Because take note, anxiety is normal. Pwede siya maging normal lang. Kumbaga, it's part of our healthy emotion lang. However, however, when a person regularly feels this appropriate level of anxiety, then it might become a medical disorder. Kumbaga, normal siya because our body is just responding lang to a situation. Kumbaga, your body, your mind, our emotion, our self is responding lang to a situation. Pero siyempre, kung yung emotion natin, yung anxiety natin, hindi na tumutugma, doon sa dapat na maging response niya, then therefore, baka doon na siya maging uh, medical disorder. Okay? So, also, si APA describe a person with anxiety disorder as having a recurring intrusive thoughts or concern. And once anxiety reaches the stage of a disorder, this now can interfere our daily functioning. So technically speaking, ang anxiety, nagiging disorder na yan if it interferes na with your daily functioning. Meaning you cannot do what you normally do dati. Dati halimbawa, eh, kumakain pa ako three times a day. Dati halimbawa, nakakatulog pa ako seven times or, or no, nakakatulog pa ako seven hours or eight hours a day. Kumbaga, dati nakapag-perform pa ako ng task ko as a teacher. Then dati nagiginaka-perform pa ako ng an an other duties ko. Ngayon, hindi ko na siya magawa. 
So then therefore, naapektuhan ng aking everyday living. Naapektuhan na yung aking daily functioning. Okay? So social and emotional impact of this pandemic, okay, where students and teachers alike are experiencing significant disruption and of course, personal challenges in our life. So as teachers, ang challenge sa atin is we need to balance. We need to balance our home, okay, home life. And also, we need to balance this work life na meron tayo ngayon. So as teachers, we are adjusting in a way that we are learning new technologies or methods of teaching. Okay? So indeed, kumbaga, we are living in a world, we are living in this generation, and we are working during this unprecedented times. Okay? So, here... Okay, so as the pandemic, this coronavirus bring about stress in our lives, my question is, is stress bad for teachers ba? Kung baga, masama ba talaga itong pandemic na to? Lalo sa physical, emotional, social, nakalagayan nating mga guro. Okay, here. Okay. So, stress is a very, very eh, normal lang and natural emotion. Okay? It is a very normal and natural emotion lang. Take note, our stress kasi is helping us to prepare or react in a certain situation. It is a normal psychological and physical reaction to positive or negative situation. Kumbaga, our body lang is responding to a uh, negative event or positive event. Like, for example, during pandemic time, nagkaroon tayo ng panibagong income, nagkaroon tayo ng panibagong business. So, positive stress siya. Or, let's say, because of this pandemic time, this coronavirus, halimbawa, na walan tayo ng trabaho, na walan tayo ng loved ones because of this coronavirus. So, technically, Negative siya. So, stress itself isn't abnormal or bad. Okay? According nga to Mayo Clinic, stress daw is our body's way of responding to any kind of demand or threat. Kumbaga, when our body sense danger, whether that danger is real or imagined, the body defenses kick into high gear Kumbaga, in a rapid, automatic process known as stress response. So what's important is how do we react to this stressor? How do we respond to this stress? How do we manage stress so that kumbaga, our body hindi siya magiging overwhelmed? Okay? So clearly, when stress begins okay, to build, okay, kumbaga, na overwhelm yung ating katawan. And once na overwhelm siya, doon na siya magiging problematic. At nagiging problematic siya if nagkakaroon tayo ng mismanagement. Mismanagement in terms of handling our stress. Because take note, our stress can affect our emotions. Our stress can affect our behavior. It can also affect our physical health. So engaging in self-care is the best way to keep our stress at healthy level. So, napakalaga na talaga ng terminolohiya na self-care. Okay? Again, okay, stress is normal part of our life lang. Siguro naman, walang taong hindi na stress. Kung baga lahat tayo, we experience stress eh. But, okay, too much stress have a serious consequence to our health. Okay? Okay, kumbaga, it can be what? A detrimental factor towards our health. So, prevention or preventing stress is very, very important. Because our body is only meant to handle small bursts. Okay? This chronic stress can lead us to serious problem. Gaya na sinasabi ng ating mga medical doctor eh, if we experience stress, nagkakaroon tayo ng mababang immune system. Okay? Because mababa yung ating immune system, okay, na-interfere niya yung proper functioning ng ating body system, which leads to, okay, lowered immune system. Meaning, we are now prone 
to colds. Kumbaga, we are now more prone to mga infections. Okay? So, it is very important to be aware of the common warning signs and symptoms of stress overload. Okay? So, these are the following symptoms na, kumbaga, too much na yung stress natin. Kumbaga, yung stress ay hindi na kayang i-handle ng ating katawan. Ang term namin dyan ay stress overload. Okay? So, let's talk about muna yung sa body natin, yung sa ating physical symptoms. Nagkakaroon tayo ng stress overload if we experience the following symptoms. Number one is aches and body pain. Nagkakaroon tayo ng body pain. Of course, sometimes, nakakaramdam tayo ng diarrhea or nagkakaroon tayo ng constipation. Also, nakaka-experience tayo ng dizziness. Okay? Nagkakaroon tayo ng chest pain. Nahihirapan tayong huminga. Nagkakaroon tayo ng rapid heart rate. Okay? Sometimes, nagkakaroon din tayo ng loss of libido, loss of sexual drive. Sometimes also, nagkakaroon tayo ng frequent colds or flu. In terms of mind naman, yung mga cognitive symptoms natin, pag tayo ay stress, nagkakaroon tayo ng memory problems. Ito yung sabi nilang parang nagiging makakalimutin ako. May mga halimbawa, kakalagay ko lang ng gamit kung saan ko siya nilagay, mamaya nakalimutan ko na kung saan ko siya nilagay. Yung iba naman halimbawa, hinahanap nila yung kanilang salamin. Yun pala, nakasabit lang sa parte ng kanilang damit. Mga ganung bagay. Also, nagkakaroon tayo ng problem with concentration. Nagkakaroon tayo ng poor judgment. Also, because of this stress overload, nagkakaroon tayo ng feeling of anxiety. Nagiging anxious tayo. Nagkakaroon tayo ng outburst of emotion. Ito yung mga pakiramdam na ang bilis nating mainis, ang bilis nating magalit. And also, nagkakaroon tayo ng constant worrying na palagi tayo nag-aalala, ano kaya ang mangyayari bukas, ano kaya ang mangyayari kinabukasan, mga ganyang bagay. And because of this, because of this extreme worrying, ano nangyayari, nagkakaroon tayo ng uh, pessimistic view of life. Nagkakaroon tayo ng negative mindset. Nagkakaroon tayo ng, tawag nila is, negative thinking. Also, we have this behavioral symptoms. Like, for example, okay, nagkakaroon tayo ng problem in terms of ating, ating eating pattern. Kung baga, either we eat too much or we eat too little. Also, nagkakaroon tayo ng changes in terms of our sleeping pattern. Kung baga, pwedeng ang haba ng tulog natin, tulog tayo ng tulog, o kaya naman, hindi tayo makatulog. Or pwede natin sabihin, sometimes, sa gabi, tayo ay giseng. At sa umaga naman, tayo ay tulog. Also, nagkakaroon tayo ng withdrawal from others. Kung baga, lumalayo tayo sa mga close friend natin. Lumalayo tayo sa mga mahal natin sa buhay. In a way, nagkakaroon tayo ng social isolation. Also, nagkakaroon tayo ng procrastination. Procrastinating or we neglect our responsibilities. Neglecting responsibilities. Also, okay, malalaman natin kung tayo ay nagkakaroon na ng stress overload kung tumataas yung ating use halimbawa ng alcohol. Okay, madalas napapainom tayo. Okay, tumataas din yung need natin para halimbawa manigarilyo. Or sometimes, sa iba naman, kailangan pang gumamit ng drugs para ma-relax. And also, makikitaan mo yan ng symptoms like, halimbawa, nagkakaroon tayo ng mga mannerism na typical dati na di natin ginagawa. Like for example, kuyakoy. Other good example is mga nail biting. Also, okay, another symptoms ng stress overload is this emotional symptoms. Like for example, we experience feeling of depression or in a way, general unhappiness. Nagkakaroon tayo ng anxiety or agitation. Nagkakaroon tayo ng, uh, nagkakaroon tayo ng sudden changes in terms of our mood. Okay, ang bilis ating magalit, ang bilis ating mairita. Also, feeling of being overwhelmed. Okay, then nagkakaroon tayo ng loneliness and again, feeling of isolation and other emotional and health problem. Okay? So, aside from COVID-19, syempre, we have, okay, we do have our own share of challenges. Because, uh, hindi lang COVID-19 ang pinag-uusapan dito eh. Marami rin tayong challenges na kailangan nating malampasan. Isa na rito is 
Kumbaga, we need to balance our work and life during this pandemic time. Okay? So, kumbaga, work-life balance. Isa yan sa mga kailangan natin gawin. Sabi nila madaling sabihin, pero napakahirap naman talagang gawin. Okay? So, ano-ano yung mga challenges na to? Okay? So, of course, number one is work from home. Okay? Alam naman natin na ang work from home setup ay very challenging because this is very new to us. Also, we have overwork and burnout. Okay? Uh, ito yung mga challenges na medyo mahirap din lampasan. Yung overwork and burnout na to. Because while we are working from home, we teachers is often feel compelled to project the appearance of productivity. Kumbaga, naka-obliga tayo na mag-project na, oh, okay, ako ay productive even to I work from home. Pero take note, this can lead to work on tasks that are more immediate instead of, okay, more important. Kumbaga, uh, mas inuuna natin yung kailangan lang gawin kumpara sa mas mahalagang gawin. Ang tawag natin dyan is counterproductive work. Okay? Teachers, particularly those facing increased workload as they juggle yung kanilang family and work tasks should pay attention to, siyempre, prioritizing what is more important. Okay? And siyempre, isang mga malaking challenges na pwede nating ma-experience during this pandemic time is this uncertainty. Eh. Uncertainty is all around us during this pandemic time. Eh. This current COVID-19 pandemic has heightened this uncertainty over our economy, over our work, our finances, okay, our relationship, and of course, our physical and mental health. But yet, as human beings, okay, we crave for security. We want to feel safe. Kumaga, in a way, we have sense of control over our lives and well-being. But this fear and uncertainty can lead us to feeling of okay, stress, feeling of anxiety, okay, and powerless over the direction of our own life. Because during this pandemic time, kumbaga, we are full of many what-ifs. Okay? Ano kaya ang mangyayari kinabukasan? Ano kaya ang mangyayari sa buhay na meron ako? Okay? Another challenge is yung tinatawag nating responsibility, change, okay? Yung deadlines and this toxicity. Okay? Take notes, okay? We are all different in terms of uncertainty now we can tolerate in our own lives. Some people seem to enjoy taking risks or living in unpredictable lives while others find the roundness of life deeply stressing. But all of us have limit. Lahat naman talaga tayo ay merong limitations. Okay? Because of this too much responsibilities, this too much conflict, this too much change and deadlines, we became overwhelmed by this worry and anxiety. So it's more important to know that Dear teachers, na we are not alone. Okay? Kumbaga, many of us are in the same boat at this time. It is important to realize that no matter how helpless and hopeless you feel, there are steps you can take to better deal with these uncontrollable circumstances. Okay? Na this stress is, we can control our stress. Kumbaga, we can control our anxiety, okay? We can face this pandemic. We can face this unknown with more confidence, okay? Then, of course, another challenge is this feeling of isolation and feeling of disconnection, okay? Millions of people around the world 
are now, syempre, under quarantine. Sa Metro Manila, tayo ay under GCQ. And many more, syempre, are practicing social distancing and or simply staying at home. Parang halimbawa, yung mga kabataan ngayon, eh, no? uh, parang ilang buwan na sila nakakulong. Ito yung mga kabataan na 21 and below. Eh. So, ilang buwan na silang hindi makalabas-labas ng kanilang bahay. Ilang buwan na silang socially isolated. Okay? As a result, kumbaga, we have in entered in a period of global isolation which will keep many us from seeing our friends and family. Okay? So, with little clarity about how long this pandemic will persist, the risk of people experiencing loneliness and disconnection is significant. So, dear teachers, uh, co-educators, fellow Tamaraos, always remember na we are not superheroes. Okay? Uh, wala naman nagsabi na tayo ay immune sa pandemya ito. Wala naman nagsabi na kailangan immune tayo sa stress immune tayo sa anxiety. So, we are not superheroes. So, we need to take care of ourselves so we can take care for others. Okay? We became a teacher because, syempre, we want to make a difference. We became teacher because, of course, we love children. Because, okay, we enjoy, kumbaga, what we are doing. We enjoy seeing the expression sa mga muka ng mga estudyante natin na sila ay may natutunan mula sa atin. It is our passion that makes us a great teacher. The same passion na meron tayo can lead us to burn out. So we need to take care of ourselves then because our students need us. Our families also need us. So self-care is very, very important for us teachers. So the concept of self-care is critical in promoting our emotional and physical wellness. Pero take note, self-care is not an emergency plan that we put in the rescue ourselves when we are in the midst of a crisis. Self-care is really something now we need to incorporate in our daily lives. Hindi porkit may stress lang, doon lang tayo mag-self-care. Hindi porkit, okay, nakakarana sa tayo ng fatigue, burnout, okay, anxiety and other problem, doon lang tayo gagamit ng self-care. Again, self-care is really something that we need to incorporate in our daily lives. Self-care is very, very important for us, teacher, because you cannot care for others if you do not take care of your own self. Self-care enables us to be an effective teacher. So, if you are tired, if you are tired, either emotionally or physically, you cannot do your job well. Ulitin natin, if you are tired, either emotionally, physically, psychologically, you cannot do your job well. So, you need to rest. You need to do or you need to practice self-care. Okay? Kumbaga, self-care is very important. So, para mabalansi natin yung ating work and life at magkaroon tayo ng healthy boundaries then. Okay? So today, I would like to discuss various ways that we can use to manage our stress. Okay, so here are some ways, some techniques on how to manage our stress as a teacher. Okay, first is distress management. Distress management is a wide spectrum technique and psychotherapies aimed at controlling person's level of stress especially yung tinatawag nating chronic stress, okay? Usually for the purpose of improving our everyday or daily functioning. In distress management, napakalaga dyan ng behavioral activation and self-management. Ayan ang pinakamalagang uh, prinsipyo 
in distress management, yung behavioral activation and self-management. So how to do behavioral activation and how to do self-management? First, we need to do some physical activities. Okay? We need to lessen our stress. Okay? So malilesen yan by doing halimbawa exercise. For example, you can do cardio workout. You can do some strength training. Ako, I used to do jogging and do indoor workout at home. And those are helpful for me to relieve my stress during this lockdown. Eh. Gaya ng sinasabi ng ating mga research, di ba? Ang exercise daw can help us increase our energy. Eh. It improves our concentration. It decreases the level of stress inside our body. Okay, it also, it, in a way, it prevents us from feeling of depression. Exercise also allow us to focus on ourselves, syempre, and do take care of our body. Okay? So, okay. So also, kailangan as part of the stress management, may tinatawag tayo na social connectedness. Okay? This pandemic time, nagkaroon tayo ng social distancing. And because again of this social distancing, in a way, it makes us feel isolated. So it is very important that we stay connected through, halimbawa, yan, mga video calls, like mga FaceTime, like mga video conferences, like itong platform na ginagamit natin. Okay? So, also, we also have these pleasurable activities. Part of lowering your stress, part of the stress management is uh, humanap tayo ng mga pleasurable activities. Find activities or find things that will make you happy at home. Kung maghahanapin natin yung mga gawain na magpapasaya sa atin. Okay? That's going to be relative because all of us have different personality. Eh. Kung baga yung pwedeng ako masaya dito, sa inyo, hindi. So, hanapin nyo lang individually kung ano yung mga bagay na makakapagpasaya sa inyo. Alimbawa, for me, because my work entails the academe, I could distress by watching, for example, documentaries or by watching movies, by watching Netflix, mga ganyang bagay. Kung baga ulit, hanapin nyo lang yung mga bagay na makakapagpasaya sa inyo. Ngayon, usang-usang ngayon yung mga ano eh, yung mga nalilibang sa pamamagitan ng pagkatanim ng mga halaman. Okay? Sa mga plantito at mga plantita dyan, mabuhay tayong lahat. Okay? Kung baga, yung mga halaman dati na mapupulot mo lang sa tabi-tabi, yung mga halaman dati na pwede mo lang nakawin sa kapitbahay mo, eh ngayon ang presyo, libo-libo na. Eh saan ka nakakita ng puno ng gabi na nagkakahalaga ng 2,000 pesos. Mga ganun bagay. E sa probinsya, ninakaw lang natin yan. Okay? So, another way, okay, to manage our stress, okay, is syempre through healthy diet and restful sleep. Okay? Syempre, we need to get a plenty of sleep. Excessive worry and uncertainty can disturb our sleep, eh. Kung punong-puno tayo ng worry inside our mind, kung punong-puno tayo ng what-ifs bago tayo matulog, makaka-apekto yan sa pagtulog natin. Okay? Magkakaroon tayo ng lack of quality sleep. And this lack of quality sleep can fuel anxiety and can fuel stress because wala tayong pahinga. Pagod ka na physically, pagod ka pa emotionally, wala ka pang tulog, ang tendency, lalong babagsak yung ating emotion, lalong babagsak yung ating katawan. Okay? Improving your daytime habits and taking time to relax and unwind before bed can help you na magkaroon kayo ng better sleep at night. So, kumbaga, prior to sleeping, do some activity na malilesan yung worrying natin. Do some activity na malilesan yung mga what-ifs natin. Do some activity na marerelax tayo prior to sleeping. Hindi tayo makatulog because nga, bago tayo matulog, kumbaga, clouded na tayo ng mga iniisip natin. That's why, hanggang pagtulog, 
dala natin kung ano man yung iniisip natin. Sometimes hanggang panaginip, eh nagko-continue yung mga problema na iniisip natin. And also, napakalaga ng healthy diet. Alam naman nating lahat yan. Napakalaga ng healthy diet during this pandemic time. Okay? Eating healthy meals can help us maintain our energy level and prevent mood swing. Okay, sabi nga ng ating mga medical doctors, if we want to prevent ourselves from stress, avoid sugary. Yung mga pagkain na matatamis o sa pagkain na mga maalat and processed food. And try to eat food na rich in omega-3. Yung omega-3 fats, hindi sensory tuna ha. Commercial lang sensory tuna na omega-3. Okay, read, kumaga, eat, eat, eat. Food na rich in omega-3, like for example, mga food na fish, ganyan. Also, eat mga soybeans, eat mga walnuts, okay? Okay, to give our overall body na magkaroon siya ng boost, maboost yung ating mood, okay? And also, malalaban na natin yung stress, okay? Maka-counter natin yung stress na yan, yung anxiety na yan, yung mga psychological problem na yan by improving our resiliency, by being resilient. Okay? Improving our resilience is one best way to bounce back during this pandemic time. Resilience can help us get, kumbaga, resilient can help us, okay, get through and overcome this pandemic, this hardship. Resilience also, kumbaga, it is not something na we are born with eh. Hindi naman pagkasilang pa lang eh, resilient ka na kaagad. Kumbaga, it is built over time as experience, okay? We have to interact with our unique and individual genetic makeup. Siyempre, napakahalaga rin ng experience para maging resilient tayo. That's why we all respond to stress and adversity like this COVID-19 pandemic differently. And of course, okay, eh, we need to be resilient. And how to be resilient? Paano ba maging resilient? Okay? First is through optimism. Okay? Through optimism. When you say optimistic or optimism, this pertains to having a positive outlook in life. Optimistic outlook encourages persistence, which often lead to a successful outcome. Positive, remember teacher, my dear teachers, positive thinking does not mean na we are in denial about the reality of the situation. It's a tool that helps us face challenges, focusing on solution instead of overwhelming ourselves with fear and hopelessness. Hindi ko naman sinasabi na maging optimist kayo, takpan nyo na kung ano man ang iniisip nyo. Na you are in denial na sa problema na meron kayo. No. Be optimist lang. Focus lang on things na kaya nyo gawin sa ngayon. Okay? Second, to be resilient, of course, we need to face our fear. We need to recognize our fear na yung fear na meron ako ay normal lang. Na kahit may fear ako, I can overcome it. Of course, third is yung ating moral compass. Always act according to our principle and values in life. Fourth, syempre, faith. Syempre, we need to strengthen our faith kay God. And so, syempre, finally, to be resilient, kailangan natin ng social support. This positive social support is actually extremely very important for our physical and mental health. Gaya na sinasabi ng ating mga research, okay, that social contact and support may help reduce stress, depression, anxiety, and isolation, as well as it promote self-esteem, it promotes normality, okay, well-being, and quality of our life. Okay? Wait lang po. Okay. Sorry, kailangan ko lang pong i-charge yung aking laptop. Okay. So, finishing well. 
Okay? How to finish it well? Okay? So, kailangan, meron tayong, kailangan natin acknowledge yung ating emotion. Okay? So, emotional acceptance refers to our willingness, our ability to accept our experience, the negative emotion. Kung baga, kailangan natin accept na normal lang na makaranas tayo ng stress. Normal lang, again, na makaranas tayo ng anxiety. Na it's okay not to feel okay. Because at the end of the day, we are all humans. We all experience a lot of hardship. We all experience a lot of stress. We all experience anxiety. We are not perfect. Okay, we're all human being. Na normal lang na hindi ako maging okay. Okay, next. Okay, number two is you need to understand our emotion. Okay, we need to understand our emotion. Mental health is very important part of our overall health and well-being. It affects how we think, how we feel, and how we act. It may also affect how we handle stress, our relationship towards others. Uh, also, it affects okay, how we make choices. So in this pandemic time, for us to have good mental health, okay, we need to understand our emotion. How to understand our emotion? Siyempre, we need to familiarize ourselves with our basic emotion, okay? Including happiness, sadness, anger, fear, love, and anxiety. And all this emotion, even the negative ones, play an important role in our life by keeping you safe, and motivating you to do things. And syempre, to understand your emotions, kailangan lang dyan eh, you need to, in a way, take a pause. Stop ka muna and try to observe yourself. Syempre, take a breath, feel your emotion, and practice self-compassion. Again, practice self-compassion. You need to remind yourself na you're also human. And all human experience a full spectrum of emotions. Okay? Next is, okay, we need to fix our eyes. We need to envision the end result. Do what you can to stay involved in somewhat of a regular schedule or familiar activity. Focus on what you can do Okay? And, kumbaga, do not focus on what you cannot do. You just simply engage lang in concrete and easily achievable tasks. Commit yourself to reasonable course of action to deal with your stressor. Okay? And always remember, my fellow Tamaraos, dear teachers, let go of what you cannot change. Let go of what you cannot change and intentionally engage in tasks where you have some control. Okay? Next is, okay, count one, two, and three. Count one, two, and three. According sa isang research na nabasa ko kay Joel Ong in 2017, sabi niya dito, those people daw who count their blessing, they have more improved mental health. Again, those people who count their blessing, okay, have improved mental health. So, it is very important for us to count our blessing. And of course, we need to be grateful because gratitude reduces stress. Again, we need to be grateful. We need to count our blessing because counting your blessing, being grateful can reduce our feeling of stress, can reduce our feeling of anxiety. Many researchers over the past decades have found out that people who consciously count their blessing tend to be more happier and less depressed. Okay? So later, after this short talk, kasi meron naman akong 20 minutes, 
to discuss this topic. So later, after matapos ang topic natin, lecture natin, seminar natin, pag uwi nyo sa bahay, do this very simple activity lang. Tinatawag namin tong count three. Count three. The task is very simple. As your day comes close, allow yourself to think about three things that happened during this day that you are most happy about and why you believe they happened. Again, as your day comes close, allow yourself to think about three things that happened during this day na ikaw ay masaya, okay? And why you believe that they happened, okay? Next is, okay, you need to find your why. Okay, you need to find your why. Actually, isa to sa mga pinakamahirap hanapin. Ang hirap hanapin ng mga why natin. But we have to find. Kailangan nating hanapin yung ating why. This why pertains to our purpose in life. Okay? If we want to keep stress, okay, if you want to avoid stress, if you want to avoid depression, if you want to avoid anxiety in your life, you need to find your purpose. Okay? Many research shows that having a purpose in life will also help you to be physically healthy and live longer. And take note that a purpose or mission in life is determined solely by you. Because its meaning must resonate with your heart and, of course, with your soul. So start today because you have the power to take positive step right now to improve your resiliency, to do the stress management, to have unhealthy emotion. It's slowly putting in place your routines, your habits, and regular pattern will help you feel better, okay? through this, through gradual change, okay? Siyempre, okay, part of lessening our stress, you need to know your priorities. Prioritizing tasks, okay, help you, okay, na mag mag makapagtrabaho ng mas mabilis and more efficiently. And this, in turn, means you don't miss your deadlines, you are less stressed, and generally have a better work-life balance. But be mindful of the present moment. Allow us to let go of our negative emotion and difficult emotion from our past experiences. Gaya na sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina, siguro at this time, during this pandemic time, we need to focus lang on things na kaya natin kontrolin yung mga bagay-bagay na kailangan nating unahin sa ngayon. Okay? And syempre, okay, prayer. Okay? The good news is prayer for stress really works. Okay? Prayer for stress relief works. Prayer is, okay, is unique form of communication kay God. Okay? A growing body of research suggests that prayer and religion rank high among the best stress reliever. Again, prayer and religion rank high among the best stress reliever. Okay? And it is very important okay, to keep track or, or kumbaga, if it's very important to, again, understand our emotion. And once we experience this emotion, once we experience this anxiety, this stress na hindi natin kayang i-handle, we need to share this to our family. We need to share this to our friends, to our colleagues, especially, again, if you are not feeling well. Okay? Um, at the end of the day, siguro, let's help each other to have a stress-free teacher. Kumbaga, learn to relax, learn to prevent burnout, and enjoy your everyday school work more and more even we are at home. Siguro, let's help each other 
to create a supportive environment for everyone to have a positive oriented personality free from various stressors. In this way, teaching process will be more productive and stimulating and will create a pleasant working environment that will have impact both on our students and to our community. Okay? And dear fellow Tamaraos, fellow teachers, again, okay, always start your day on a positive note. Begin your day by doing something that lifts you up and makes you feel good. Maraming maraming salamat po. And that ends my short talk. Ma'am? Okay, thank you very much for that insightful uh, talk, sir. Okay. Welcome, ma'am. We have a very interesting question here coming from Karen Santos. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Sa Facebook. Because I think you mentioned about faith. So yes. So, question you, sir, is how do people cope, I think, those people with different religion cope with stress kapag siya ay agnostic or atheist ang professor, for example? Ano kasi yan, ma'am, eh? Part yan, ma'am, ng individual differences. Mm -hmm. Na, kumbaga, ang coping mechanism na meron ako, maaring hindi pwede para sa kanya o hindi pwedeng para sa isa. So, kung, halimbawa, ang faith hindi makakatulong sa pag-cope natin with stress, then find other ways to cope with your stress. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. I hope, Karen, we answered your question. Uh, do we have other questions here? Yeah, because we're live also on Facebook. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let's see from our Q&A here. Another question here from Jason Hieronimo. What are the ways or strategies or methods na maaring gamitin ng isang teacher or normal person to control temper or having a short patience po sa lahat ng bagay? Uh, Jason, I suggest you practice pare distress management. Kasi part ng distress management is controlling your emotions. Kumbaga, part of distress management is kung paano mo kokontrolin yung emosyon na meron ka. Okay? So, distress management pero nasagot natin dyan, ma'am. Okay, yeah. Uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, I think it's fair kung ako yung pwede magtanong, di ba? Yes, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Yeah, wala na bang question eh. <laughs> So, yes, ma'am. A question, ko, sir, is this is because I think we teachers should also be aware yes. on how we influence our students or how we impact, diba? So, what are the effects or what effects uh, if the teacher mismanages her stress? And the tendency, ma'am, is burnout, ma'am. Burnout. Mm -hmm high level of stress, high level of anxiety. Then later on, magilid yan to poor performance, poor teaching performance. If we mismanage yung stress na meron tayo. Mm -hmm. Mataas ang correlation yan, ma'am eh. Kung ang stress ay hindi motivated, kung, stress, uh, kung ang teacher ay stress, kung ang teacher ay hindi motivated, then therefore, ma'am, magilid yan to kung baga, poor teaching performance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. I think that because we we should be all aware as teachers, right? Yes, because yeah, we directly impact uh, to our, our students. Yes. So especially kapag you're having online sessions and you're mm -hmm. stressed. So imagine, you know, how the student would react. And mm -hmm. sometimes, di ba? It's yes, we can, like, kapag ang student is stressed na, ikaw stressed pa. So, mm -hmm. you know, that would be uh, negative. Yes, okay. Ang mahirap like... kasi sa panahon ngayon, ma'am, eh, ang hirap basahin ang emosyon, lalo pag ang gamit natin ay computer, laptop. Ang mm -hmm. hirap basahin ang emosyon. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So I think on we don't have so much time. Thank you, Sir Arnel, for answering you, those ma'am. questions. Welcome, yeah, from me and from our audience. Unfortunately, we don't have the luxury of time, but yes, we'll surely ma'am. address the other questions. If you have questions, guys, you can still post your questions and we can still answer it to in our upcoming webinars. We have so yes, much webinar. We have so many webinars actually. So thank you for your uh, for, for posting your comments and questions. And uh, to end this, we would like to ask our Sir Nell again for your to share your takeaway, sir, or point of reflection for everyone, as this topic is very, very important. Ito ba napaka lang po na ito. Kumbaga, as teacher, kumbaga, let's all be reminded of what brings you a sense of purpose and momentum. Kumbaga, why we are working so hard, why we are teaching, our sense of purpose will help us deal with stress. Living on purpose will help, will help us make feel alive, clear, and authentic. So, napakalaga talaga, ma'am, na hanapin natin yung purpose na meron tayo. Kung ba't ba ito ginagawa? Ba't ko kailangan gawin to. So, part siya, ma'am. Napakalaking bagay siya para ma-prevent or maagapan natin yung ating stress. So, find your purpose. Hanapin yung wise ninyo. Do distress management. And um, mahalin mo lang kung ano man yung ginagawa mo. Gaya nga ng sabi nila eh, ang best teacher daw teach from the heart and not from the book eh. So siguro napakalaga na mahal natin kung ano man yung bagay na ginagawa natin. Yun lang ma'am. Okay. Thank you very much uh, Sir Arnold. That is very enlightening. Uh, uh, just to inform everyone, our evaluation form is already posted in our Q&A section. So thank you again, Mr. Neil Diego, for the fresh and essential insights you imparted to us today. And of course, thank you to all our participants Welcome, for, our, for and attending. And congratulations to FUIE. Yeah. Congratulations, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> thank and you, happy everyone. Teacher's Day. Ah, yeah, yeah, this is in celebration of our Teacher's Day. So thank you, everyone, for the time. And we hope to see you again on the next webinars. We have so many as part of the celebration of the National Teachers Month. And goodbye and have a great day, everyone. Thank you.